Yeah, welcome to the Backyard Professor videos. I've just melted some ghee, some nanic ghee in my pan. I've got my uh, cooking stove underneath here on my cooking stand and it's working beautifully. I'm going to cook up some venison and some eggs. Okay, I've got three real nice venison steaks here that I'm going to plop right on there. Ooh, more than three. Got some real nice venison steaks here. And you can see that's just cooking like crazy. That's nice. Let those cook up for a few minutes. You can see this stand is holding on my cast iron skillet and my stove is working absolutely beautifully on this while I cook up some venison and I'll scramble some eggs. This is awesome, man. Making sure they don't stick too much and they're not. Oh, those smell good. They're cooking real nice. I've had them on for about two minutes is all. They don't take very long to cook. That, uh, that little stand you can see is just sturdy as all get out for this, isn't it? That's a glorious thing to see. Wiggles a little bit, but not bad. The downside of a pop can stove is you can't control the flame so it's on full go <laughs> I mean there's there is nothing else than full go at it so it's looking really good the blood's already coming up to the surface oh look at that that's perfect that's just what I want right there yeah oh that's just right just absolutely perfect for these venison steaks Sensational smell. Woohoo! Oh, that's glorious. I am thrilled to be able to use this to cook with and to have enough time to cook with it a lot. That's very nice. I mean, you know you're doing something right when the flames are cooking some nice venison from the deer that you hunted last year and got my first time ever. Actually, I think it was two years ago I got him. Nice three-point buck. And uh, this is just cooking up glorious. It's cooking fast. Uh, I've got this ghee on it so that it doesn't burn like butter. Ghee is basically clarified butter anyway, but yeah, that's coming along real nice. Very, very nice. You can see the blood coming up through it, so that means it's getting cooked. You don't want to overcook venison. You really don't. I've cooked enough venison that you really don't want to overcook it. Uh, that's getting close. That's getting close. These are thin cut steaks. That's true. But you can see I can move the meat around. Turn it over. Move it around on the grill and all that easy enough on this stand. Yeah, it jiggles just a little bit, but so what? That's, it's, that is spectacular awesome. Yeah, see, you can see those flames hitting that pan and going all the way around that pan. That is fantastic. Look at that baby cook. That's beautiful, and that's just about the right height between a two-inch I think this stand actually ended up being about three and a half inches tall. But that's just right. That's a good flame right there for cooking. Then we come up back to here to see those glorious venison steaks. Now that's a good meal right there. Yep, yep, there's another angle of my dinner cooking. And I am going to turn these over one more time. Yeah, that's just right. 
just right, perfect. In fact, I think they're done. And I'll put the rest of these steaks on. Yeah, those are done. Plate full of venison steak. It doesn't get better than that. And then I'll put these other three or four in. That's a nice steak. Oh, there's just two. These are the big ones. Yeah, these are the big ones. Look at that. Those are beautiful steaks. Absolutely sensational. I'm absolutely thrilled with this stand, you guys. I am just so not kidding. That stand is fabulous. And I mean, it's burning hot enough that that, that handle is hot. I should have a glove or something. But look how fast it's going to sear those steaks and sear all those wonderful juices in. That's fabulous. That's good. That is good cooking right there. Yeah. Doing this out in the wild. I'm out in my workshop right now. The wind picked up really bad. And I wanted to test the cooking, not its wind capacity. I don't have any kind of a wind shield made or built or invented yet for this. So I just wanted to make sure I could cook. And I can cook. In fact, I in fact I am so not even kidding how delicious this is that I'm going to eat one right now while I'm cooking the rest of them. Mm. Mm. There is nothing better than venison cooked on an open fire. Mm. Finger looking good right there. So that package had a couple more steaks than I remembered. Putting up three, four, five, six of them. And these two were cooking really well. And they're cooking really fast. So, where'd my plate and fork go? Where'd my fork go? Well, you gotta innovate. If you don't have a fork ready, do it with a knife. Yeah, man. Oh, my fork's in my hand. Duh! <laughs> Turn those over. That is perfect. Mmm. Mmm. Mouthful of venison during a cooking video with my pop can stove and pop can stove stand. Oh, yeah, baby. Check this out. Look how perfect that's cooking those steaks. I mean, it does not get better than that. Mm. That is phenomenal. I don't think I've even been doing this. Um, eight minutes yet. That is a beautiful sight. In my opinion, that is a beautiful sight. Just about done. I don't wanna don't wanna overcook venison. If anything you wanna undercook it, and then what I'll do is I'll pop in those three eggs, and this flame is just going beautiful in this uh pot can stove. Man, this little jewel is a sweetheart. That is so nice. In fact, I'm gonna call that one good. That one's done, and, and heck, that one's done too. Let's call it done and do some eggs. Whoops. I'm in front of the camera, sorry. Let's see if we can do some eggs. I'm going to do just a little bit more ghee in this. Just for kicks and giggles. Just so my eggs don't stick. The nice thing about using ghee instead of butter is it will not burn. It does not burn, so use ghee if you can, I'm just saying. There we go, there we go. Now the eggs won't stick half as bad, even though they're going to stick like crazy, I'm sure. Crack open an egg. Yeah, there's one down. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, beautiful. 
And the brown eggs, of course, that's what you want. You want brown eggs, if you can help them. Look at that, cooking them right on up. Very nice. And the flame is just kicking rump. That is phenomenal. Okay, what do you say? Let's turn these over. Scramble them, actually. Now let's turn them over. Yeah. Let's turn them over. Which <laughs> technically is going to scramble them. Yeah. All right. Fine. Let's semi scramble them, shall we? That's what you get for cooking outside. Yeah, baby. That's a good program. I love this thing. I absolutely love this thing. It is cooking well. I don't think I've been 10 minutes all total. That is good. Good looking eggs are going to taste good too. Five pieces of venison and three eggs for dinner. Now that's a good dinner. I don't care who you are, that's a good dinner. Look at that. Turn them over. Turn them over. Look at that flame going like crazy. Is that incredible or what? Look at that thing just kicking it out. Spreads the heat beautifully and evenly all the way over that pan. Fantastic. Perfect distance between it. Cooking up those eggs. We've got steak and eggs, baby. Oh, yeah. Steak and eggs, that's what this is. That is what we're going to have. Steak and eggs. Put those eggs right there on that steak. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's absolutely a thing of beauty, baby. Scrape all that good cooked egg off. There you go. There you go. Voila. And look at that thing still just absolutely kicking, but I can put a pot of water on this. In fact, I think I will. Okay, check this out. I've got a real nice blue ceramic pot of water. Put that on there. Now, mind you, this is after I've spent... 15 minutes cooking dinner. Whoops. This is 15 minutes after cooking dinner. Yeah. Yeah, this is sensational. This is phenomenal. Okay, while that water's heating up, truth or consequences, let's see if these eggs taste any good, shall we? I know the venison does. Oh, perfect. Mm. Perfect. Good eggs. Steak and eggs on a nice day. Beautiful day. It's a little breezy today, so I cooked inside this time. Nice piece of venison. Yeah! That don't get better than that. Venison and eggs. I didn't even have to scramble them. That's because I used ghee. Now that's living. These little pot stoves are so cool. Pop can stoves, I should say. Mm. 
guy is just sitting right there pretty. Fantastic. Now if you wanted to prepare your coffee or hot chocolate first, you could. That would probably be the ideal. Whoop. But I've easily got, I've got six cups of coffee in there. Six cups of water, I mean. Have another piece of fabulous venison. Absolutely cooked perfect. Just light, light pink. Not quite done all the way through. That's the best way. Oh, look at this. Holy cow, you guys. Bubbles are already forming. I don't think I've had that on three minutes yet. No joke. That's pretty awesome. You could, I could have, that's pretty awesome. I could have done uh, the chocolate, the hot chocolate and coffee first and then cooked up the meal. But my point is, these little two inch stoves, they go forever. You can cook enough food for three people on a hike. No question. Mm. That is good stuff. How much fun is this? Makes me want to get out in the mountains. Yeah, that is perfect venison. That is perfect venison. Just a light pink, wonderful brown, pink in the middle. Not bloody, just pink. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. You need to try these pop can stoves, you guys. They work so well. Oh, and those eggs, crispy on the edge, soft in the middle. Yum. I mean, that's campfire eggs. Oh, that's perfect campfire eggs. Okay, I'm starting to get some bubbles. Look how beautifully those flames are going up top there, hitting that can and then spreading all the way across the bottom of that can. My water pot, I mean. I, I've been in this 20 minutes now, easy. 20 minutes and it's going very good. And it's starting to steam and bubble. And that was just regular uh, water fresh out of the tap. It wasn't, uh, wasn't warm, just regular water. Look at that, bubbles are starting to form. That's nice. Okay guys, truth or consequences. I put the lid on about five minutes ago. I don't think this water has been on for 20 minutes. I think total time that I've been out here using this pop can stove has been about a half an hour. It took me about 10 minutes to cook my meal. So let's check this out. Put, oh, look at that. Hard rolling boil. Oh, I love it. <laughs> look at that. And that's easily... Well, I'm going to say three cups. I think it's more than that, but I'll say three cups. Three cups. Yeah, you can see that. That's a hard boil right there. Now, here's the other thing I wanted to show you. From the hard boil, 
and I've been at this for half an hour. I mean easily half an hour. Look at those flames. Those flames are beautiful. They're just going, 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 man. There it is. Boiling water. I'm going to say three cups, two cups, whatever. I filled it over half full. So, and I did put the lid on it for a few minutes. So there you have it. I mean, you could, you could uh, boil up with these two-inch pop can stoves. This is good stuff here. Seriously, with this two-inch pop can stove, and it's still going. <laughs> I boiled three cups of water in my pot after I cooked a meal big enough for two people. And of course, I saved out the other steaks for my wife. But uh, yeah, I had three venison steaks. I cooked up six venison steaks altogether and boiled at least two cups of water. I'm going to say at least two cups. And I suspect seriously three. So, and it's still going. I think total time lit so far, this little two inch tall pop can stove, along with my cool little pop stove can, pop can stove stand, which works beautifully. It holds a big pot of water and it holds cast iron pan. Yeah, number six cast iron pan with food and I was able to stir it while it was on it. I am thrilled. This is 100% success. I can't wait to take this thing with me hiking and into the mountains. This is going to be fun. You can be, you can feel real confident that you have a good, steady, useful source of heat and cookability with foods. I mean, you can take those pre-prepared foods in the aluminum pockets, you know, cup of noodle soup and stuff like that, and just have all kinds of food. And this thing hasn't gone out yet, so. Thanks for watching my cooking video. This is the first pop can stove I've ever made. This is the first pop can stone stove stand I've ever made. And this is the first full meal that I actually cooked on it. Now I'm going to take my hot water and go make some hot chocolate and enjoy the rest of my afternoon because I've got a full belly and I'm feeling great. So thanks for watching my video. Come back for more. I'm going to do more prepper video. More, more ways to make your wilderness experience because I was technically raised in the mountains. And we've got a lot of, uh, we got a lot of information on how to live in the mountains and in the deserts. I live in a high desert, actually, with mountains all surrounding me. It'll get 70 below here, truly, sometimes, mostly in January. It's very, very cold. You don't want to move here and live here. The winters are horrible. But you got to know what the heck you're doing. So, anyway, thanks for watching my backyard videos. Prepper videos, backyard professor prepper videos. I'm gonna go do some chess. I've got a good chess game coming up for those of my chess fans. Believe me, I've got uh, someone requested a French defense analysis. I will do one of them this weekend as well, plus a really cool game. So be good, do well, have fun. Thanks for coming over. Thanks for watching the video. Thanks for enjoying yourselves. Try this. I, I'm serious. Try this. It's a lot of fun. Really it is. <laughs> I'm thrilled.